Okay, folks, what we're going to be looking at here in this video is Ganymede. And basically, all, but pretty much we're going to be looking at, uh, if I say it wrong, it's a moon up by Jupiter. Now, you've got to remember, these things are huge, okay? The, the moons of Jupiter are very large, okay? There's five known. Uh, but there's a lot of moons. There's more than 60-some. I think they're getting up. To, I know there's at least 63 moons on Saturn, and we're getting up to, like, possibly 68, possibly, they've found now, moons of Saturn, okay? Then you got a hyperbolic stars that are up there on Saturn, too, that have been showing you in the videos today. Now, since Jupiter is always a long ways away from our sun, there are other stars out there that they're heat, and I'm going to show you that. Now, remember, Europa is the one that we're interested in. People are seeing all these lines. And I'm going to show you the butterfly effect in the star heat that is getting crisscrossed. It makes crisscross marks on Europa and so forth and so on because it's one of the outer as, along with Callisto and Io. Now Io is more closer into Jupiter. Now there's great possibilities that more than likely Jupiter, I mean IE, Duck, our core of the center of Earth is a star, okay? Molten lava, the core, the, the center of the Earth is a hot, fiery, nuclear, uh, radioactive uh, core, okay? Just like a dead, tiny little star, okay? Not dead, though, because uh, you get lava volcanoes and very active lately, not just because of Fuka Fudge up, because of radioactive closer hyperbolic star activity right now, locations and so forth of everything in space, i.e. everything I've been showing you. Now, with being Jupiter, doesn't put off any major heat that we know of, but they don't, NASA doesn't really tell us a lot. You can research a little bit on that. Uh, we have, what we get is light curvature, heat, radioactive, static, DC, direct current, that's correct, and also hyperbolic star. So there's two causes of effect of what's going on in Europa that they're seeing what they're seeing and this is a hyperbolic star so basically you get movement but you see in a straight line you see because it does its orbit every day okay so you get light curvature from out in space and then factually we got this at a 999 on a picture of Europa and you end up seeing now they're being way out in Jupiter and in the you know not much sunlight now this is the sunlight area that basically comes from the Sun but we can't bet our life on it either because this could be one of the super giants that are way out behind Jupiter too that's giving light on this side. But basically it should be. But you see these stars right here that I'm gluing in on as they got their black light and their curvature that are that hit up onto Europa. Okay. They melt snow, the icy crust or whatever that is of Europa. Okay. And what happens with the rotation and the orbit of Europa, they end up getting all these tracks all over. But there's also the actual factual that if you really look at the photo is really good. Now that's just some of the stars that glimmer down on. I've got up at, I'm up at 999. And then that's a star that's basically glimmering down. And like I've showed you in the past, you can look at pictures of the moon and you'll see stars glimmering on the moon. Now when they've always tried to make you think that they've landed on the moon or anything like that, you never see any stars. Well, stars glimmer on the moon every day, and the temperature of the moon is too warm to be up there. They need an air-conditioned suits, all right. Like to go buy one of those air-conditioned suits. I'm not going to buy one of them, but I know they won't work very good. So anyway, so anyhow, we are in on an object here on Europa where they keep getting these marks. Okay, there's a good chance that there's a lot of remnants orbitals that get very close and conductively like a mirror throw the heat now these are stars that are shining on a remnant moon or whatever of Europa something that's smaller that they probably maybe haven't realized they found yet because as you see it looks just like earth or any other object with the sunlight on one side and the darkness on the other side now this could be Io it could be any one of you back up the footage that I showed you of the moons of Jupiter okay so even as we look at, and I'll, I'll go to that in a second, but we'll look at Europa from that other shot. And as you can see, when, we, when you got this shot here, you can find a moon of Jupiter that basically got stars glimmering on one side really good. And on the back side, on the dark side, 
they glimmer really good with the sunlight and everything on that planetoid object and then you see the grooves that end up getting melted into Europa's surface from the reflective light just like mirrors just like the satellites okay so the starlight super hot and then basically also there's a possibility that some of these remnants might be smaller because you remember the shadow gets put off the same size in space so it's glimmering so there's a good chance that there is very small remnants and since it's in line with that streak that you're seeing right there that are possibly rubbing or at least getting so close to Europa that they actually melt the surface and that's an object that basically gets found if you blew in very closely on this shot of Europa's surface i.e. and then you get all this I'm a snowmobiler okay these ain't snowmobiles on Europa okay what this is is close objects and then see you get milkshake overrun on some of the tracks sometimes because you get more sun stars that melt a little bit and then Europa rotates okay now there's a good chance that some objects on Europa could be like some of the objects that, okay, this is a shot that I've got of, uh, I'm going to end up coming back to and showing you of Jupiter's surface that Russia's got. Okay, now we're over at, I believe, we were looking at Europa. I think this is Ganymede. Yeah, this is Ganymede. Okay, Ganymede has a very possibility that it might actually be coming to have a, to, it looks that it could have a cloudy surface, clouds in its atmosphere. Okay, it very much looks that it could have clouds to its atmosphere. No, no matter what, there's stars that glimmer on Ganymede also. Okay, but there's also been milkshakes, icy objects, or, you know, uh, the mule train, what is it again? Uh, cleaning solvents. Uh, oh, it's, but anyway, objects in space that hit just like they hit in the moon, and it looks just like what some of this stuff looks like on the moon that's hit the moon objects now we have a star that a dark star black star but it's not really it's basically just light curvature from the star and heat out in space now eventually that's what I sat factually on Europa these stars melt the icy whatever surface because if that's ice from a comet that's hit Ganymede okay actual factual then that star is eventually going to that black light curvature basically DC at atomic energy from outer space is going to make tracks through that snowy ice melt or whatever that and then if it's a phosphorus chemical that's on of the whatever object that is hit this is Ganymede that it's going to end up making trails ie which possibly uh, some of these might be trails already that are the same thing that you see when you look at Ganymede. I mean Europa, because we're looking at Ganymede right now. So the factual, and this is almost looks like the moon, doesn't it? It's a moon and it's huge of uh, Jupiter. So the factual is that the stars are what are making our tracks and also close, small, more than likely, because of the factual, if you go back to the object that I glued in on, there is small, uh, there are small, and as you can see, sometimes it looks like these remnants probably touch Europa's surface, and then they melt, or at least the star, the and then you see you get cross hatches because one goes over top of the other and does more melting of the icy surface of Europa okay and then there's some areas where the idea that the stars are doing these kind of patches because they're doing that kind of etching but then that could be some of these remnants because when you see spots like this in ie this now this could be an impact some of them could be impacts but some of them are melting of the ice and the snow on 
Europa. Okay, so I'm gonna get out and basically this is a shot from of Europa. I'll get it down in a smaller size, I guess. Come on. Well, so there's a good field shot of Europa's surface, okay? So a lot of these objects might be getting so close with either the static reflection like a mirror in, mel in doing these meltings because it doesn't look like if you see that like that, it looks like it's basically reflective of smaller little orbitables of Europa that are actually melting and then that then we come into more of these that get pothole okay and then the factual that maybe some some could be impacts but no matter what most of the lines are absolutely most of the lines are absolutely getting etched from stars it's just like when I've showed you of making a can with a hole in it and catching the Sun's movement on earth if you make a, a, a film camera out of a, it's like a soda can, you pop a hole in it and you do a time lapse over like six months or three months or whatever with a piece of film. It's just like what's going on. The static, radioactive, ultraviolet, beta gamma is hot and it rotates around and burns. And then a closer star at a different orbitable comes in and burns another track through the snow at different directions and then people start thinking that there's people that there's some kind of life form on it's just all it is is melting of the snow surface and these are all orbital tracks of stars and also reflections off of smaller remnants that melt the snow on Europa okay and you got good uh, factual of knowing that stuff does impact we know that stuff impacts the moon and stuff this is ganymede and stuff impacts ganymede okay and then ganymede surface ends up with uh at different times of different impacts of stuff that possibly has water in him goes splashing across the surface of even the same thing with the do with the moon chemicals or whatever and then they just like if you drop acid chemicals on a concrete floor, you can burn it, and then they end up burning into the rock or ice. Now, Europa is more than likely an icy surface. Now, some of this stuff might be icy surface because when, after these objects have hit Ganymede, they are just like a milkshake getting thrown at anything. A milkshake, and then they stick, okay, because they're on the actual floor of Ganymede, okay? But when you go to, to Europa... And you see this hyperbolic action from all these stars that are doing the melting. There's tons of stars out in space, ladies and gentlemen. And then they, on Europa, they end up giving you an IE, the factual that I got it at 9.99, and you're going to see a stars right there on Europa. And I can get it glued in on it. They're melting lines. They're melting actual tracks into Europa's surface. Okay, because of the heat, because they're up at Jupiter and it's cool. So whenever they get the beta gamma, the DC current flowing down onto the surface, i.e. there's some stars that are burning into the surface. As you see, sometimes they get a long, wide track, and then every day or every orbitable, whatever the whatever the time of the orbital, even if it takes like over years, three or four years or whatever time frame, they end up doing these orbitable tracks. And then some of the lighter ones here that are closer are like mirror actions of small orbitables and also hyperbolic stars because then you get the different directions. But some stars are very much in their line track of what they're melting into the icy surface of Europa. So then I'll pop out a little bit and we'll give you a little bit better of a view of Europa and that's what they're looking on Europa. And then this is all colorization that they put in on here. And then I actually, I think I actually do have some pictures of Europa from like Pioneer and also from, uh, so basically that's what's etching all these marks in is basically light heat with a mirror. Mirror reflections of hyperbolic stars and just regular stars and so forth. When you see a, a wavy one like these, these are hyperbolic stars that move around a lot and quite possibly close little uh, orbitables.